Hello, everyone. It is Krista Nicole Mann with my Know or Never podcast, aka Now or Never. And tonight I have a special guest, Anna Warfield, and we're just excited to have you here. So thank you for coming on. And um, I just want to give a shout out first to Stellar Human. Um, it is a new stylish boutique uh, thrift store for creatives. It's all in one. So uh, we want to give a shout out to them in Binghamton, New York. And um, tonight we're going to just get to know Anna a little bit more. Um, I've personally known her for a little bit. So I want you all to get to know who she is. So Anna, tell us about yourself a little bit in a short summary, you know, who you are, <laughs> what you do, yeah. why you're here. <laughs> why I'm here. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. I am honored to be a part of this and I've been paying attention and this is a wonderful podcast and I can't wait to see where it goes and I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, yeah, so I am an artist. Um, I live and work in Binghamton and I'm from north of here and from a little town called Whitney Point. Um, wow, I, yeah, <laughs> we're learning stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so I presently um, am a practicing artist. I also take on contracts, creative contracts with projects that I find exciting. Um, so I work for Luma Projection Art Festival and Anthony Brunelli Fine Arts right now. And Kristen and I worked on a project together this summer. Woo! Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Go yeah. Ahead. And then my, my personal practice as an artist revolves uh, around generally feminist themes um, and fiber. Um, so I work in both 2D fiber and um, 3D sculptural um, objects. Wow. And that's a unique combination. So um, <laughs> it's not easy at all. I'm a painter, so I don't even know how where to start with 2D, 3D in a fabric sense. So um, what, you know, did you want to be when you were growing up? Because I like asking this question because, you know, I always wanted to be an artist, but I just didn't know how to and life hits you and stuff like that. So other people, they kind of want to be something when they're younger and then they get a certain age and they're like, they will totally left. Um, so have you always wanted to do art or was it something else? You know, what yeah. tell us about that? Um, I always wanted to be like creative. I feel like I was always most comfortable in creative spaces for sure. And I had this, I feel like for the most part, I wanted to be an artist. Yes. But there was a slight deviation in like middle school where I wanted to be a fashion designer. And I think oh, it was right oh. when Project Runway came out and Christian oh, yeah. out, like <laughs> one his season. And I was like, I was wearing tool skirts. I think I did this all the way <laughs> to high school as well. But yeah, I wanted to be a fashion designer. And then like, <laughs> I was I yeah I don't know maybe I was too shy for that because there was runways and stuff but no, I decided see that to thank you though <laughs> do you That's see it crazy. I mean I could see the the switch wouldn't be as drastic because you yeah. work with fabrics anyway so yeah it's I true yeah I, still no, I wouldn't fabric. I wouldn't look at you weird if you did switch to that I mean it's still artistry but yeah um so after that you know fashion design type of admiration mm -hmm. did you come back to regular art or what you know yeah. what yeah what was that like well in high school I I stepped back into studio spaces for sure okay. like more intensely and I was introduced mm -hmm. to um studio practices that were more like conceptually driven and looking at art, art history more intensely obviously than you would in middle school or younger elementary uh grades um and I started working with a lot of painting and um collage I did a lot of collage and uh at the end of my time I was doing ceramics and that's what my like college portfolio was a lot of ceramics mm. and also quilted portraiture so I was all over the place <laughs> so that was to me it's not over the place but for our audience you know, this is this is the real of what goes on with, you know, artists like we can cook one day and then next yeah. day we're 
we're doing a mural on the brick building. It's like, yep. it doesn't matter. So um, yeah. it's not, it doesn't sound crazy to me, but. All over the place, but like, yeah. it's because I had all these interests and I loved working with my hands. And like, that was the, that was the unifying factor in it all was like, that was where I was able to communicate best with, with my hands. So yeah. Um, yeah. Then in college, I worked, um, I started and I continued working with fabric for my first year and did then a lot kind of with collaged paintings where I would do collages and then transition them into like paintings or drawings. Um, um, didn't love that. I was kind of pushed out in my love of fabric. It was kind of like mm. the program was very like, that's not a medium that you can work in and call yourself an artist. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. Wow. I was like, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I believe really? them, which is like kind of on me. Um, wow. But I didn't know any better. And then at the end of my time in school, I circled back to fabric and I was like, there's this thing that I enjoy working with that I have in excess and have access to. And I don't have to struggle to learn like the chemistry of photography to communicate what I'm trying to say. I already know how fabric works. Um, and I have it in bulk. And honestly, being an artist is expensive. <laughs> it is. It so, is. You've I'm got about to start a GoFundMe tonight because it, it, yeah. <laughs> it's That's not for cheap. Yeah. 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 I feel and for fabric, I mean, for quality, good quality fabric, that has to be. Yeah. That's why I don't work with that. <laughs> so do you like pick scraps? Like, how do you get, like, how did you get to that point of knowing what to use, how to, yeah. you know, use it, how to stretch it, you know, that's, that's a science. <laughs> I, it, I don't, I just kind of made it up. So I started working with um, muslin, which is like scrap paper fabric, oh. I would say. It's like what um, fashion designers use to like make mock-up um, okay. garments. And then they okay. like make the thing out of the actual valuable fabric. But what I found was muslin was like a blank canvas in terms of color and it works. It's a easy fabric to dye. And it let me kind of dictate like the colors that I wanted to use. So it was kind of like painting, but on like a, um, a cheaper fabric. Um, and you can get it in bulk and it like, it's a money saver that way. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, other series of mine, um, so, like the ones behind me, they're from um, a 2D series that I've been working on called the Command Series. And that was just found fabric. I, I happened upon it when I was in an antique store and it was like five bucks and I got like a whole ream of it, like a ton. Um, so like I've been working with those and other projects I have typically revolve around like like denim, like I have jeans and everyone has jeans that they don't wear anymore. So like I use that for like side projects and stuff. So I really don't have to buy that much. Mostly right. I spend money on frames and trying to figure out how to install my work. <laughs> now so, that's the, that's the pretty intense part. Cause I yeah. see you on your social media and I'm like, I would fall, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I don't have the eye to do that. Um, as you know, with our project, but um, <laughs> my question is, could you, can you mix the fabrics? Have you ever tried to like go off the deep end and just do some crazy fabric work? <laughs> I think, well, for um, this past summer, I did a project called Sweeping Statement, which was a really large 35 foot mm -hmm piece yeah mm -hmm. outdoors. so I had yeah. to not I had to work with like something that was water resistant for that to like stay yeah. <laughs> outdoors for a period of time so I work with nylon um I didn't love it nylon is very slippery to sew mm -hmm. um it was fine it did its job but I definitely I like I like working with muslin I feel like there's like a comfort softness familiarity to it it's like I don't know. It feels like, it just feels like coming home when it yeah. comes to mediums for me, which maybe I should be like scared of that because like, <laughs> it's like getting too complacent or something. I don't know, but I, I like working. Possibly. With yeah. yeah, possibly. <laughs> now this is like something that I want you to answer like honestly, but if you don't know where Whitney Point is, <laughs> there's nothing there's already <laughs> nothing to do in Binghamton, New York. So I'm trying to like, who was your, like, who did you look up to? Oh yeah. How did you come with this fashion sense? Cause I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not going to assume, 
but I'm not sure there was a lot of like that going on at Whitney oh. Point. Um, I definitely did not fit in Whitney Point. Right. I'm like, you, yeah. you're so chic. Like, how did, this, <laughs> how did this happen? So can you kind of like talk about that? Because I, I can't even imagine it, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, being from Whitney Point was like, I, I, I didn't appreciate being from there until I left there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how it yeah. goes. For, I think, yeah, that's kind of how it is for a lot of people. But it, yeah, it's a very small town and like very, very small. I graduated with a class size of about 100 and it like kind of depended on who decided they wanted to still be in school or not. And like, right. which is which is remarkable because I knew everybody and I knew yeah. everybody in the grades above and below. So it was like very like close knit, um, but also it can be very ostracizing. So to be like the art geek um, who like, kind of didn't really have like an in-group she's just kind of like floating like that was very much me (laughs) wow Um, but I was fortunate because my um best friend growing up her dad was an art teacher my Mm -hmm. mom was very creative she was an artist in her own right and then she did a lot of um so the reason I had access to a lot of fabric was because she was an industrial embroiderer oh Um, nice she did embroidery all the time and um, for like companies and whatnot uh, in this area. And so, and she also did um, like set design. So she was working like large scale, fun, really creative projects. So I was always around it. Kind of like legend is with you. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So I had that environment and like, I knew that those were places that existed. Yes. There's hope. (laughs) There's so much hope. And then, um, yeah, so those were just like how I grew up was like between my house and my best friend's house, just being surrounded by creative energy and realizing that it was like a thing that you could delve into. Um, yeah. Wow. So you didn't have, um, there wasn't too many people like doing art, apparently, that no. graduated with you. Not really. There was one girl um, who also pursued fine arts in college. Um, she went to, I believe, SUNY Plattsburgh okay. um, yeah so she pursued art the two of us did but the rest no not so much there was a large push for people to go into pharmacy school when I was graduating oh that makes sense because when I moved out here you know that that's the thing like find something in the medical field it even pressured me like I was going to go um to BCC I was gonna try to get in their nursing program yeah a nurse like, I'm like <laughs> what was I doing like huh? but it does no it's like a heavy you know for the listeners there's a heavy um health field um out here in upstate yeah. New York um don't, I don't really know where that comes from but um they do receive art too you know out here so it's a good you know balance depending on where you're at but um so that had to feel uncomfortable but when you got to college you know what happened because (laughs) you pick you did you choose to go into arts or was it like a thing you had to kind of take your time with yeah I dove head first into it. I knew I was going to be an artist. I didn't really know what that meant. I still don't really know what that means, but <laughs> you never do. I, yeah. It's like, I, I was ahead of my time in high school when teachers were asking me like what I was going to go to school for. I was like, fine art. And they were like, why would you do that? There's no jobs in that. And I was like, I'll make the job. Like <laughs> you get what yeah. you get what I dealt with. Like yeah. it's like I'll make it up. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so then in college, it was that was kind of culture shock. So uh, coming from small town Whitney Point, um, like farm country, and then going to Cornell where it's very mm-hmm. Ivy League. It was a lot, this culture clash. <laughs> yeah, but that's like, you didn't, everybody can't get into Cornell. So that's, congrats yeah. for that. You know, that's a lot. And and to pick fine arts. Within that. I really like you. Yeah, your professors had to be like intense. <laughs> they, were, they were intense. Yeah. Yeah. But they also, it also 
so at the start of it, it was like, they were very intense and they kind of were overbearing in a way. And then by the end of it, you were like, I was at least like, okay, but how do we do this? Like, right. how do I make the money? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how do I not become the starving artist? And they hated those conversations, but like finally towards the end of it, they were like, okay, we'll do tax workshops. We'll talk about things like contracts. And like, because there were a couple of students like me with similar backgrounds who didn't have trust funds for when we graduated and like, we, we needed to know how to do this thing. So we yeah. were so loud in this whole process that they finally listened and it was very helpful. And I think it will has continued to be helpful for students after um leaving so wow so you had a little activism back then you know oh, yeah like... I'm, I'm shouting all the time <laughs> <laughs> i'm like and you, okay. and you see anna or you meet her you think she's like quiet <laughs> she is when she you know is in her chill time but when it's time to work a project you see a whole <laughs> different person like, that's let's get this done right like <laughs> determined driven um so yeah it I, the cornell training did that teach you like when you got into art professionally did that teach you to be more like vocal when someone tries to maybe get over or um because all artists have that experience where people don't take our craft or our industry seriously and they try to get over and they don't want to pay us you know all the list but did that teach you you know to stand your ground and be confident in it Parts of it did, I think. And honestly, so I did, I did the fine arts and I also studied communications and I studied mm -hmm. communications because the fine arts degree was a bit like lofty and conceptual and esoteric and like, very like, Oh, is this pencil tip a piece of art? And like, I was like, that's not helpful. Right. So I did communications because I was like, I need to be able to like market myself and like treat myself as a business so I think I already had that kind of in the back of my mind um that it was it had to be more than the fine arts and um I think the communications was actually where I got the like the sense of like how to like execute a project or like how to like understand like the questions that need to be asked and like that sort of thing just because mm -hmm. of what that kind of degree program was like it was more research-based um and then getting into like career after college I mean college <laughs> college doesn't it prepares you to an extent but it doesn't, started. doesn't really prepare you <laughs> yeah I know how you feel about it and and it's fair <laughs> like it really is see so I tell people all the time if legend wants to go to college I'm not going to talk him out of it right I'm not going to be that parent but he will have the option to use the money that I save for him to go in a route of art or whatever he wants to do and he'll know you know from what i learned the business part of it so i find that interesting and um intriguing that you thought about taking communications because we have a lot of artists that don't know how to communicate what they created yeah. so it's it's <laughs> frustrating sometimes yeah. because you don't meet a lot of them that want to tell you what they created they're kind of like look at it <laughs> <laughs> and they're really like mean about it and you're like okay but it's like a splatter of paint like I don't I don't there's know there's gotta be more to this <laughs> right and they're just like deep and so I find that intriguing that you took communications and you thought about like you mapped it all out because mm -hmm. I don't find too many artists since I've been professional that do that. They kind of just like think it's going to be easy to yeah. market and, you know, talk, you know, talk about it. But um, how do you feel about the COVID and communicating mm -hmm. during all of that because yeah <laughs> because yeah it's yeah <laughs> Go ahead. last year was like it was rough I, at first I feel so here's what 2020 looked like from like my brain I was like I thought it was going to be short that we would be stuck at home right and so a lot of my artist friends were like "Ooh, it's the COVID artist residency like we're all stuck at home we're just going to pump Excited. out work yay work time and I was like I was here for it I was making work I, I made three pieces 
I did a marathon like stint of like making work and I was like we're doing good but then COVID didn't stop and then the world like it, it just it escalated and it just felt bad and I stopped making work because I was depressed <laughs> right right yeah. and then for our viewers and listeners yeah how me and Anna really got to know each other because <laughs> um we knew of each other but we you know it's before COVID I don't even remember what it was like but you would pass people you would be in the same networking you know but you never really meet the person and you'll be like well one day we'll you know that yeah. time will come and then COVID is like wait I took advantage of that because I should have met who I was supposed to meet um George Floyd hit during COVID um so the world also was a little bit upset at these things that happen um and that's when me and Anna kind of came together with this wonderful project um but talk about like you getting involved in that I don't want to say you were immersed you wasn't like in a toxic way but talk about like how that moved you and what it meant to you um with seeing that and you know why you felt like you had to do or speak out do something about it um talk about that yeah I I feel like especially being from a place like Whitney Point and then moving to a city like Binghamton I feel like we have this kind of mindset where we think that cities are more progressive or at some point in your life that's what I felt and you think that, you know, we're making progress on so many things, but then you have conversations with people or things like George Floyd happen and it makes headlines again that, no, we haven't made enough progress on any of these things. And um, then murals start popping up across cities like in DC that are just massively impactful. And it reminds you of the fact that art and specifically text and word choice has a huge impact on how people can perceive a situation in the world. And the Black Lives Matter murals that were cropping up, I was like, I was floored. <laughs> like, I was just floored. I was like, yes, they absolutely do. I'm not going to swear. Um, and and the fact that we have to say this and like defend these words is outrageous to me. And then you <laughs> wanted to make it happen in Binghamton. And I was like, absolutely, this should happen in Binghamton. <laughs> and then you were facing all this like pushback and backlash and um, like bureaucracy crap and things that like I've dealt with on like less of a public stage setting, but like have like I, a knowledge base in like I can yeah. help with that. And so that's why I connected with you. Cause I was like, I can help. <laughs> How can I help? And boy, did she help. She, I, I mean, let me at it. Guns are blazing. And uh, I didn't under, like when I started to speak out about it, I didn't understand how many people were waiting for it to come to Binghamton. Um, but it's like, how did you feel about the murals? Like, did you want to start it before you even knew about me or anybody talking about it? What was your position like in knowing that you know how to do this project because you already do letters, you already know how to map it out? Like, were you frustrated to the point where you might have started it yourself or like, I couldn't yeah, have come, I couldn't have, I mean, yeah, I was, I mean, I went to the protests and things like that. And I don't know, I, I just, I know that something like that couldn't come from me. It can come yeah. from you with my support a hundred percent, but it needs to be you at the forefront of this thing yeah. as much energy of a suck that it is for you. And it needs to be Kristen's name there because you are the member of this community that needs to be the driving force and needs to be Aww. in the spotlight for that thing. And I am happy to help anyone that needs to make this happen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. So the fact that you were talking about it was my, <laughs> okay, we're doing it. <laughs> like, I know. Cause she had, I mean, she had it done already. Like she had already, <laughs> like, we didn't have to really meet. She just got really, she asked me questions and she I wrote, was like, wrote for a night. <laughs> was like, here you go. Here you go. I'm like, okay, I think this is <laughs> happening. Um, because I saw in some cities like, you know, Syracuse, they were supposed to have theirs done. Um, and there were people involved that, um, I'm not going to say like they couldn't be involved because they were white, but 
they were kind of trying to like spearhead it. And I found those cities didn't get it done. And I was just like, well, that's kind of like obvious to you as a lesson. Like you should let the people that are, you know, did de- really dealing with this spearheaded. So um, the fact that Anna stepped up and she just like took charge the, how many days were we out there? Like two, it was three. two. It yeah. was so hot. I still have two. <laughs> <laughs> Ten lines from it. Um, but yeah, we're. I'm grateful because they wouldn't have got done without her. Like, y'all don't understand. But um, I just wanted to hear that because you know, you might have been like maybe trying to start it, and you just don't know sometimes. You know what people are dealing with behind the scenes. Um, so thank you for that. Any um, you know, kind of epiphanies you had after college to really go into the industry because being an artist you can do art for your whole life but it's totally different when it's professional like Mm -hmm. totally different it can um either be good or it can like tire you out so what was your like epiphany moment yeah it was like I'm actually gonna do this whether I'm broke or not (laughs) and um, talk about that because you know it's a up and down, you know, even if you're known, it's up and down. So oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, even if you're known, it doesn't mean you're yeah. making money. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. Right. People can know your name and you can still be struggling. And people should talk about that more because I think there's like so many like misconceptions about what it means to be an artist. So that's one of them that you can I'll get you know, on and do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we could do like a panel, a whole other, right? A panel about that because that is so real. Like, yep. yeah, y'all don't even know. But go most ahead. artists have many jobs. <laughs> most artists will, yep, and we'll get back to that though. We will because that could go. That could be a whole other separate episode. But yeah. um, how did how did that transition go? Like, was that difficult? It was hard. Yeah. It was hard because it was after it being hard to transition into that space of being in academia and like accepting that I didn't have to take like biology every day, which I mm-hmm. like I missed the sciences, which was interesting to me. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I was like immersed in academia and then I was like, OK, now I have to have a job. And I kind of <laughs> fell into this place of like um, like feeling pressure to get into the nine to five realm because that's what you yeah. do. Mm-hmm. Um, And then there was like weird added pressure of like a lot of the kids from my program were moving to New York City, but I couldn't afford to move to New York City without knowing that I had a job. And like, I don't know, it was like a a weird situation. Um, So, yeah. So I started working at BCAC, the Arts Council Mm -hmm. in the area. And I I was really fortunate because it was like actually landed me right in fine arts, but also had overlap, which was great. Um. But like, and it connected me to so many people. Like, I I believe the first time I like interacted with you was through BCAC. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then others, like it, it just introduced me to the arts community in the area. So I'm like forever grateful for that. Yeah. Um, but at some point I realized that the energy that I was putting into this nine to five, I mean, it was great to save money and like to be able to do that. Cause I was, I'm, I was more well off than I'd ever been in my life because yeah. and it was cool to have a job. And mm-hmm. um, so at a certain point though, I realized that the energy that I was putting into this space, like wasn't going to allow me to make work and pursue art the way that I needed to for myself. Um, so a year and like about a half into it, um, I began to like transition out um, mm-hmm. and I, I started working for Luma um, as their production director, and that gave me the freedom to create my own LLC as an artist, which let me, like, it lets me bring through my contracts for whatever projects that I'm working on, be it my own personal work or for others. Um, Yeah, and it, with losing the nine to five, I was able to, like, dictate what my day looks like, and I can travel weird. It's so weird. It, that was that was it's crazy. It's still to weird to me. I'm like, I think I yeah. need a job, and then I'm like, <laughs> something will come down the pipeline, like a project art related. I'm like, yeah. no, I don't need. No, I don't need one. No, and I'm like, I need a job. Yeah. So yeah. that it's wasn't little, that long cool. ago, right? No, it's, you- uh, I just had a year, one year, wow. in in January. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So your first year of like 
all of like just yes it was COVID (laughs) I know (laughs) I've been like laughing about it morbidly to myself for this whole year like what a year to have quit my job and (laughs) what a year what the heck I mean I I quit mine to the end of 2019 so I get what you're talking about because we were kind of going through it together without knowing yeah Um, but it was a crazy year. Yeah. 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 So now I'm like, all right, I know what I want, you know, I know what I don't want to do. Um, so do you have those deciphers too? Like, I know what I want. I know what I don't want. Yeah. Yeah. I think I kind of, I realized like I have a better routine for myself now than I did at the start. Like I break up my day, um, per like project that I'm working on, which has been helpful. Um, and like, And then it's like deciding what projects I do want to work on and like learning and being real with myself about like what I didn't like about certain things and what my boundaries have to be like, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. you need to sleep. That's important. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've had to learn boundaries too, because you can get excited and say yes to everything and then completely hate it when you're on the Mm -hmm. project. So, um, So what projects are you working on right now? Or what do you have coming up, you know, for yeah. Our, our people? Yeah, so I, hi. <laughs> 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 Little cameo. I, um, I am working on kind of like a goals project for me this year is to like complete um, at least a piece of new work per month. Um, that just comes off of like last year, not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Goals for myself. Um, and so I just finished up, um, an expansion on this one series of mine. It's called the command series. Um, and it's a bunch of, um, 2d text pieces that have like short statements that kind of all relate, but are all command language. Um, mm-hmm. so I just completed that and I'm working on language for, um, a larger, uh, text sculpture, one of the uh, puffy 3D um, ones um, about comfort and like finding like your space, like a corner in like maybe a home or like just within you. Um, so yeah, I I have like weird things that like I, I can't, they're not like official yet. So I'm like, right. like, like in the like process the phase yeah. for them. Yeah. 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 So like, that's kind of what's happening. I'm supposed to have a show that was postponed it was supposed to happen in 2021 or excuse me in 2020 but we now think it'll happen in 2021 with um Schweinfurth Art Center and the Cayuga Museum in Auburn oh nice Uh, show yeah and I'm I'm really excited the the proposal for that was to do a pieces or to do pieces in the Schweinfurth space that are like that relate to like the contemporary kind of um, space that that is. And then the Cayuga Museum is like a historic um, museum. So I wanted to make pieces that responded to that and like have like a juxtaposition of like both of the spaces. So those there's, I have language in my mind that I'm like working through right now, like yeah. to get that done. Cause so. that's like having exhibitions are like the most stressful. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's fun, but it's like that leading yeah. up to it is this boop, 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 boop. so yeah uh, congrats on all of that if you, you. want to leave our listeners with anything some type of advice if they maybe want to go into artistry you know yeah oh advice um anything you want to say I feel like when it comes to art like you can take in as much advice as you can take in but at the end of the day like your decisions and your gut are what matters for what you are making yes. and like that was something I learned this year mm-hmm. and then I would like to also leave listeners with um I believe Kristen you are putting out Valentine's Day kids oh, yeah. <laughs> and like that's coming up real quick so. yeah I'm doing that <laughs> um but th- I'm trying to make you know all this about who I interview and oh, well. I didn't, didn't want to make Anna's interview all about the Black Lives Matter mural because that like she's so much more than that. Um, mm-hmm. And she's a staple in the art community. So we wanted to like give her her flowers while she's here. <laughs> Here's your trophy. <laughs> because we're broke, you know, artists. But no, um, 
Yeah, I wanted her to come on so y'all knew who I worked with and just who, you know, has continued to be friend. You know, we don't talk every day, but now we always have that project that we did that kind of just made us ride or die, Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie okay. and Clyde. A thing of the <laughs> yeah. Bonnie and Clyde and bingo. <laughs> but I do actually, before we go, we need to shout out, um, hold on, let me get the whole name. Cause I'm gonna bring it up. Uh, Studio Sophia, right? Am I right? Studio Sophia, Sophia. Yes, Sophia, Sophia. You can find her on Instagram if you can see that. But we have her earrings on. She gave us these as a gift when we did uh, the mural. So yeah, that's why we look stylish. Um, thank you. Yeah, so thank you. And uh, see y'all later. And have a good night.